So when you have a fire and I can, you know, uh, reflect to Ukraine in the situation as a house which faces a fire. So what you need immediately, you need a fire extinguisher or probably a fire department to come and they and to extinguish the fire actually. But what you do afterward need afterwards, because you see uh, the destroyed or uh, at least you know like you know uh, generally destroyed or ruined building, you need to to renovate to repair or to repair or to rebuild. So um, then you need a plan. You need have architectures. You need money. You need workers. You know so. What I say that nowadays we only deal with uh, extinguishing the fire, which is necessary because if you don't if you don't do that, suddenly uh, yeah, the house is gonna burn, and uh, it's gonna you know, you know it's gonna like it will it will be like yeah, you'll destroy everything. But but while thinking about that. Simultaneously, you need to think what will be next. I name it five points. First, we need to stop thinking of Ukraine as a country of past, but we need to think of Ukraine as a country of the common future, which means we need to build a political nation instead of building a nation based by the common ancestry or blood or whatever, which is to its 19th century approach, we need to have a 21st century approach. Second, we need to be very pragmatical to the point that we don't need to name and to gain enemies or uh, look for friends. No enemies, no friends, just interests. That's what we need to have. Uh, following Lord Palmerstone, the UK's uh, Prime Minister of 19th century. Uh, then third is robust civil society. That's what I said. That in order to to get changes to get changes done, you need to have this this foundation. Foundation is civil society in every country, in the United States, in Africa, in Ukraine, in every country. Name it. The civil society. So people who care, they do the stuff. The fourth, we need to be beware of our geography. By that I mean, we need to understand not to be hysterical and not to be idealistic. By by to be, be once again pragmatical, shrewd, and sound, and understand that we have the neighbors. Do, well, the neighbors we have will be there tomorrow and day after tomorrow, from both west and east sides. And we need to know how to deal with all of them. It's not a child children's playground where you can just isolate yourself and feel resentment or feel envy or feel joy or feel you. You don't have that in politics. You need to be like you know more pragmatically oriented on the result of your country geography and the last thing which ukraine and you know, politicians i believe lack today is the idea like before starting doing some things approach your goal a real goal you believe in you like you know committed to fulfill uh, to uh, to approach you committed to 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 uh to get to this point and only after that move gradually step by step every day not for back and forth but only uh, you know not only uh, towards this uh, this goal not necessarily in straightforward way sometimes you need to wind but but just see and do this it's it I call it uh, constancy of development and sustainability just do every day do make a difference, make a positive difference. That's a very good question and I believe both uh, approaches are helpful and necessary. Uh, Plato always believed that all changes in an ideal state should be done by top down. Aristotle always believed that they should be done bottom up. I think they both were right, so we need to follow both great men and say that only in the moment when these two currents will meet each other, it will be the chain reaction will start happening. And for both, we need new kind of enlightened, enlightened and educated people, newly educated people for both. So I also think that 
bottom-up movement one day will create somebody who will come to the top and will start top-down things. So I don't know. Frankly speaking, it's still a miracle for me. I think I am. A, I consist of two different men. <laughs> I think the one who is an artist is is something is somebody who's driven by heart forces or soul forces, if you want. And I think it's completely. Uh, it's it's not my job. It's God's job. That's what I think. Then the other kind of person is, is a mind person, is somebody who was brought up in the family, had an education and had a specific character and mindset. And that's what makes social activists for me. So by having said that, I believe that even being undereducated, being not that strong character, not that com that strongly committed to help uh, your, my own country, not being social activist at all, I think I still would be able to create some good things in music because I think it's, it's something which I call uh, irrational or transcendental. It's something which is there. But I ha I'm, I'm happy to have both. Sometimes it's not very convenient, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm happy.